It's normal. They're not moving at all. It's routine. Very heavy laser at 59th Street Bridge. It's insane. Tonight on 48 Hours. <laughs> are you tough enough? Backs into my car. Whoa. Makes the wrong turn. Just drive around in these streets. You see the greatest theater in the world. We came back to the car. The car was gone. Are you quick enough? It's like some kind of competition. You won tonight. Yeah. Yeah. It looks that way. All of New York City is its always on. Over there, you have to wear a line. Over here, you have to wear a line. Look, everybody. Are you patient enough? I need to get my car back. Hard working money. I don't need this crap. Where can you put it? I can't put it inside my office. But they hate us with a passion. I'll ticket anybody. Too much ticket? Yeah. And everybody. I also have a ticket for my husband. May he rest in peace. Thank you. Are you clever enough? This is going to be a rough point to get to. You'd better be. Move it! Because you're about to be driven to extremes. Warning, you are about to enter a jungle where the slightest mistake can cost you your time, your money, your sanity. You've already made your first mistake. You brought your car. Second mistake, you brought it to the heart of New York City. So did almost a million other people. Crawling into Manhattan every day are four times as many cars as there are parking spaces. You can imagine the results when they get here. Well, maybe you can't. It would be nice to say that this ordeal brings out the best in people. It would be nice. In and around New York City, for a motorist to take an hour to get into work is perfectly normal. Backs into the car. Backs into my car. No. Makes the wrong turn. No. Backs in. We almost always have a couple of accidents working. And you decided and you to back up. That's what you did. Even looking. That's what you did. A couple of disabled vehicles. Me, all my life, I make everybody get away with everything. Today, you ain't getting away with it. Maybe a water main break, maybe a fire, maybe a demonstration. <laughs> Nothing is unusual in New York City. That blowed out to your mother. This is what morning looks like in New York City. 880,000 cars, vans, and trucks, all trying to stuff themselves onto one island. Who would willingly drive into a situation like this? This woman here is Pat Shanigan. She's going to drive one of the 880,000 cars that tries to squeeze every day into Manhattan. So again, over the west side, so far, so good. She's agreed to let us ride with her this morning, and we have marked her car with a large yellow X so that should any helicopter be able to see us, this would be the marker. We're on the road by 7.28 AM. How far away are we from Manhattan? Approximately 30 miles. That's 30 miles to this tunnel that takes Pat right into Manhattan. If everything goes well, she'll be at this spot in about 50 minutes. Traffic and weather together update time. You'll if everything goes well. I just cross my fingers. It's a roll of the dice, really. Meanwhile, in a nondescript building in downtown Manhattan, there is a man who has the power to move traffic like so many toy cars. Good news for traffic at George Washington Bridge. You got a good getaway now. From this is Fred Feldman, chief of New York's Traffic Communications Center. Control to nine, Charlie. When there's trouble, first they send help. We have the Miniman in route. Then they send word. Affirmative, Centerline Webster. One of the people Fred always tells is Neil Bush a flying traffic reporter. Neil tells the people down there to go another way and watches them move. Do you ever feel sorry for those people down there? I do indeed. Uh, I'm sure that if they could, uh, they would rather be in uh, Peoria, South Dakota, where there's no rush hour. But, uh, you know, this is life. And right now, life for the New York commuter is not so bad. So far this morning, we're in good shape. We're about halfway through the rush hour. 
This looks pretty nice. So far, 45 miles an hour. Back at the nerve center. Right now, we have a 13-foot tractor-trailer truck on one of our bridges, and it's over height. Now, this may mean that we either are going to have to back that tractor-trailer truck off the bridge or try to deflate the tires so that he can fit under. So this could be the end of that quiet morning. Well, this, yes. Yes. Pat suspects nothing. Upper level 5-9, we have a tractor trailer over height. We're going to have to back him off, so... So Fred tells Neil, and Neil tells a lot more people. Over on the east side, we had a two-tall tractor trailer truck get onto the 59th Street Bridge. Very heavy lanes there at the 59th Street Bridge. And nobody wants to get stuck in this bridge traffic, so Neil is ready with an alternative route. Remember that tunnel Pat is heading to? Well, she's got a lot more company now. They're not moving at all. That 59th Street Bridge did have a truck problem. That's no good, no good. Stay with the Midtown Tunnel instead. This is not okay. <laughs> this is not okay at all. It's normal. It's routine. You're late? I'm late. Got a report of a plane down, Broadway and 250. Don't worry about that plane. Fred isn't. It shouldn't be a traffic problem. It may be unusual in a lot of other cities around this country. But it happens in New York. We're rarely shook up or surprised by anything. For Pat, there is finally light at the end of the tunnel. We have made it to Manhattan Island. Yes. And how long did it take us to get here? Exactly an hour and a half. How long did you expect it to take us? I was hoping for an hour. And she's not even there yet. Look what sits between Pat and her office. Generally, uh, New Yorkers are resilient uh, folk. Uh, they are tolerant. And they come and they wait in line to uh, resolve their summonses. I got $1,000 worth of tickets. I got to pay off in order to uh, register my vehicle. They hate us with a passion. If we're doing good or doing bad, they hate us anyway. They hate the uniform. But us, I mean, individually, if we was out of the uniform, I believe they would really like us as a person. But if you came to work in your uniform? I believe we would get beat up. <laughs> It's the start of another day for Artie Simmons and his partners, regular guys, until they transform themselves. They carry a badge and a ticket book. They are traffic officers, and a good day for them means a bad day for drivers. On average, they'll each write 45 tickets a day. 13 million tickets are written every year. Go out there and do your job and be safe and enjoy while you're in the process generating $25 million a month for the city. And these citizens are their victims. Their day, their ordeal, is about to begin, too. Well, I just came in last night. I'm, I'm from out of town, and I parked where uh, there's no sign whatsoever, and they told me to away my car overnight, so I got to get Albert out of town. Albert Leonard is a tourist 2,000 miles from home. $3,053. Okay, for a car reported stolen two years ago. They haven't taken no action. They haven't done one damn thing. I also have a ticket for an outstanding summons for my husband, may he rest in peace, from two years ago. They told my car away, those slimy son of a guns, and um, they won't give me the car back. I owe $3,500 worth of ticket, but fine, hey. I ain't perfect. Most people that come in here are angry because they've got to pay something they don't want to pay. Okay, you have to pay all the tickets that, are, that have J's next to them in certified check, cash, or money order. Artie, you must look at New York a lot differently than most people do, right? Most people drive most people. down the street and say, uh, there's a nice building, Yeah. there's a nice looking store. Yeah. You drive down and say, there's a violation. The city's costing us thousands of dollars a month in tickets because we can't find no space. It's, it's wrong, man. So where are you going to park? I don't know. You don't have a space to put it. Where? where? Where can you put it? I can't put it inside my office. Hey, you look, too much ticket. Too much tickets? Yeah. Do the right thing, you won't get it. There seems to be something about parking tickets that brings out the worst 
in some people. You can't go to bad neighborhoods to move the cars, no. Just something about it that they feel the government is really intruding, that they have a constitutional right to park their car. We're making more traffic. Look at somebody else getting my spot. It's really ironic, as I asked the traffic cop, I said, OK, the park here. He says, yeah, there's no sign. We can't give you a ticket. It's on vacation. Uh. Can you kindly raise your right hand? So I swear to tell the truth and only the truth that today's hearing. The notices are saying that I owe additional money on the same tickets. It's OK that you paid it late. You still owe money. These people have been caught by the computer. They now must either pay up or see the judge. Senior Judge Irving Schwartz. Okay. A man has an argument with his wife, which he loses. We know that. He comes out in a fury, comes down to the Parking Violation Bureau, and takes out his fury on the judge, on the staff, on everybody else. That's called displacement. We get a lot of that here. And the police came the second time. So I was remain on the car. They told me anyway. I'm here, I'd like to take care of my business now and not wait. I mean, the person is deceased. My third time here, I want you to know. Yeah, don't worry. I got one right here. A real humdinger. There are no accommodations in this particular building for a restroom for men or ladies. Well, I'm, I'm 88 years old. I gotta take a leak. I, I'm afraid to leave here. I guess I should go buy a camera, go take a picture of the street that has no sign, and show it to him. <laughs> this will be my project for the day, I guess. When people come in with a single ticket, the tendency of the judges is to be very reasonable and very lenient. Albert Leonard? Because these are not people who are really destroying the quality of life in the city. They just got an isolated ticket. They really feel, legit, genuinely feel that they're innocent. And you have one summons, is that correct? Yeah. The ticket was written improperly, and it's going to be dismissed on that basis. There is a God. And there is a God, <laughs> <laughs> The typical response is anywhere from 25 to 40 dollars but the scoff laws were talking thousands the people who haven't answered tickets for three four years they may come in owing three four five thousand dollars i caution you if it's reduced to five dollars run don't walk to the cashier and pay it there is no question that these nice people upright citizens will often fabricate a story my wife will not drive on a highway or a bridge. <clears throat> so I know she did not use that vehicle to come into this city. And I know personally I haven't been in New York City with a motor vehicle in six years. They are people who ordinarily would not lie, but who feel that to beat a parking ticket isn't really lying. It's still hard to believe that all six summonses fell off your car. I guess the best one I've heard is the fellow who was, uh, who received a ticket for parking at a meter uh, without putting a coin in the meter. And his defense was that he couldn't put a coin in the meter because a pit bull was attached to the meter. You know something? I've been conned by a lot of pretty good motorists. And I'm not ashamed to admit it. But the fact is, you walk in here, you tell me you had, you sent it by registered mail, but I forgot to bring the receipt for registered mail. Now, be reasonable. You know what Werner Wolf says, give me a break. Give me a break. Is there anybody who wouldn't take it? I'll take it, my mama. Okay. I'll take it anybody and everybody if they're in violation. President of the United States? If he's in violation, he got it. Look at these people. They're alive. They're walking. They got some place to do. You know what I mean? They got something going on in their lives. For 22 years, cab driver Tim Andre Davis has been driving and sitting in New York City traffic. His strategy for survival? He talks. I mean, just ask him anything. Why don't you have a partition in, in, in your cab? It seems a little unsafe. Well, it is unsafe, but when I first started driving a taxi, I had one because I was very nervous about my safety. But one day I picked up Diane Keaton and Woody Allen coming out of the Eagle Tavern downtown, and they're going to the Madison Square Garden to watch the Nick game. 
And Moody got in with the army jacket, a fatigue jacket with the hood over his head. And he's sitting right behind me, and Diane Keaton's sitting right next to him. And I had this full petition. And Moody starts to whisper in Diane's ear, and she's going, oh, Woody, that's so funny. And I'm like, get my, and I'm like, you know, I got the window, I can't hear a damn thing. And she's, oh, Woody, you should put that in your next picture. And I'm going crazy over there. I'm missing a private performance by Woody Allen, all right? I get him there, and like, I was so frustrated, and that was the last day I ever, I don't care if they kill me, I'm not missing any more private performance by Woody Allen. I love to listen to people talk in the back seat. Like, like most New York cab drivers, Andre does have a second job. My father said the reason why my hair is so curly is because of all the screwed up ideas in my head. As a stand-up comic. One time I had two Southern women in my taxi a mother and a daughter, so I said to them, so what is it, Sister's Day Out? Well, that's the nicest thing anybody's ever said to me. I'm her mother. I said, come on, you're pulling my leg. I tell you, I'm her mother. So I says to the daughter, well, if you look half as good as your mama does when you get to be that age, you're going to be a very lucky young lady. Well, this woman gave me a big tip and a big kiss, and she floated out of my taxi. I picked up two New York City women, mother and a daughter. So I said, so what is it, Sister's Day Out? What do you want, a big tip? So the daughter turns around and starts punching me in the back going, do I look that bad? Do I look that bad? With the meter still running, we'll have more of Andre's New York stories later in our 48 hours. <laughs> Somebody move. Pull it up. Pull it up. Everyone knows that traffic in Manhattan is a killer. Move it. Move it. But only a few realize how deadly it can be. Oh, move the car. Come oh, on, no. Stupid idiots. Every extra second it takes Ed Loss to get to the scene of an accident can mean the difference between life and death. There's a shoe around the puzzle. If you can Doug Young is his partner. OK, your lungs are clear, you're breathing OK. You're trying to give medical care, but is part of your job also just like trying to figure out how to get through traffic? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a big part of your job. I mean, Ed will talk back and forth. You know, which is our best route to, to go there? Ed would say, yeah, I came into work today. They started digging a big hole on 34th Street. Keep away from it. Uh, we're going to listen to our radio, find out if another unit has responded to uh, a motor vehicle accident. And we'll keep away from that because, you know, the street's going to be blocked up. It doesn't matter you have your siren on or your lights on. They don't move. But look at this. I mean, it looks like there's no place to go. You get very creative with these uh, sirens. So what makes people move? A lot of times you hope for professional courtesy from some people, but they're just looking to go just as quick as everybody else. So, I mean, they just keep walking. They don't, they don't know what I have in the back seat over here. I could have somebody in their family over here, and it doesn't matter to them. Here's where the trouble begins. You've got cars and trucks double parked all the way down the street. You've got the one lane of traffic barely moving. If an ambulance has to come through here, where's it going to go? What would you do if an ambulance had to come through this street here? I would pull over if I had the space, but being that you got nowhere to go, you can't go to the side, because then you take the risk of running somebody down. Some drivers can't move. Others won't. I think that there's so many sirens going back and forth, they just get immune yeah, to it. Yeah, they get immune to it. We're going to go. It's 5.30 PM, the height of rush hour. Ed and Doug have just received a high priority call. That means they need to get there within four to six minutes. Yeah, if we can just get some of these people to make a haul here, we can get through. Here in New York, uh, where there's a hospital, within 10 minutes of any place, with the traffic sometimes, the whole call can still take you 45 minutes. And that doesn't leave much room. They reach the scene in almost seven minutes. Ready? In this case, in plenty of time, the patient appears to be having a drug reaction, but is not critical. Ed and Doug drop their patient off at the hospital and are back out on the streets. We got a job. It's a high-rise fire in Midtown. People may be trapped. This guy's going to take the turn.
Coming through, coming through. They're not going in. The biggest problem we have in this scene so far isn't so much the traffic, but the people on the streets. Coming through, guys. Come on. Ma'am, excuse me. Right, folks. Doesn't it get frustrating having to deal with people, cars, just to do your job? Extremely frustrating. You just keep breathing, that's you thought, all right? Come on, let's go. Back it up, please. Excuse me, folks. One, two, three. When I learned how to drive, you know, I was always told you, pull over to the right when you hear a siren. Are people not doing that anymore? Very few. For some reason, they just don't have the respect for the ambulance. I mean, they'll move for these fire trucks because they're huge. But for the ambulances and the police cars, they just don't have respect for them. You can tell the difference between the different sirens and um, people, you know, a cop can do something. A cop can give you a ticket. An ambulance can't. We can't give you a ticket. And it's, it's very hard to enforce those laws. Edit. Next job, the most critical call of all, a priority one. Possible cardiac arrest. This cop is on the scene, can't get a pulse on this guy. The victim is just 30 blocks away, but the traffic is horrible. So look at this cab here. Unbelievable. He's, he's going to ride the yellow line, so I can't even go on that side. Come on. Go where you get through. Welcome to Midtown. Trying to fit through here. One log jam after another. Well, on a priority one to three call, uh, cardiac arrest, a choking, a heart condition, uh, it's ideal that you get there in under four to six minutes, preferably under six minutes, because sure. brain death starts to occur within four to six minutes. It has already taken 10 minutes, and they're stuck. They radio for a backup ambulance. Brian, is three Charlie There's going no place to go. 12 minutes after they got the call, they arrive on the scene. The backup ambulance, which was further away at the time of the call, got there first and has already begun the revival process. The patient has no vital signs, but his body is warm, and Doug and Ed believe they still have a chance to revive him. They are wrong. He is pronounced dead at the hospital 30 minutes later. If we had gotten there a little quicker, we might have been able to make a difference. We may not have. Uh, we'll never know. It's a very sad feeling. But you give it its due, and then you got to get back on the ball, because yeah. two minutes later, you might have to do one. it again. I'd love to grieve a little more for this man, but I can't, because i got to get human. back out there and do it again. You go. Uh, you want going uh, to United Nations building? Yes. Okay. I'm going to first, first, uh, third Avenue and going to up. These are future New York cab drivers. Please repeat. What? First. 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 Before they learn the job, I don't know whether I heard third or whether I heard first. They've got to learn English. First. 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 Okay. I go to uh, Third Avenue and go to up, okay? You wanna go to run up the meter? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> These people are trying very hard. They can speak English. They just don't speak it in our, in our dialect as fast as we do. Look, pal, just drive. When I make, make up my mind, I'll tell you. Why don't you guys learn to speak English? People get to my cave and go, oh, you speak English. They say, well, you should try it sometime. You know, New Yorkers think that they speak English. Well, they should really know that they don't. You know, they have to speak clearly, enunciate the ends of their words, you know, go slowly so the person can understand what these drivers can understand what they're saying. Can you imagine if they were a cab driver in Saudi Arabia and somebody just started yammering at them in Arabic, would they know where to go? You'll go down to the pyramid and make a left? You know. Larry, come on over here. You can be the driver. Larry Fridlick is in this special class for Soviet immigrants. The subject, taxi driver English. You say 10th Avenue, and you say, I'd rather go up 8th Avenue. Tell him. I want to go to... Eight, eight, seven, eight. Eight, seven, yeah. Okay. Yeah, up to you. No problem. <laughs> no problem? Well, Larry's got a little problem. I asked him, including his time in Russia, how long in his whole life has he driven a car? Uh, maybe 12, 15 hours. 12 or 15 hours? Yes. Having spent only 12 hours driving a car, now in two weeks' time, maybe you're going to be doing that for a living. I don't know. 
You got vans cutting in front of you. You got New Jersey drivers, tractor trailer trucks, more buses. Kamikaze pedestrians jumping out like rabbits all over the place. All right, traffic looks pretty good today. Now, I want you to loosen up your neck here, because there's a lot to look at. Look at the taxi stopping in the middle of the intersection. Now, it would have taken him two minutes or a half a minute. Very dangerous intersection here. All right, a lot of accidents. People trying to beat the light, come around. Look at the biker just zooming by. You got to watch these bikers, because they're zooming like rabbits in and out of traffic. Look at all the yellow trucks here, Hertz rent a truck. You want to keep in mind when you see these trucks on the road, the last time this person drove a truck was never. So you want to be careful. I would like you to take out scene nine. What are you trying to do? Run up the meter? I apologize, don't worry. We will take it off the meter if you wish. Do you feel a little sorry for a guy who's been living in Odessa, say, to hit this town, and one and a half months later, they've got to know where they are and how to get from place to place? No, I think I feel, I, I think I feel take a pick for the guy that he's here. Well, what do you want, still be back in Odessa? Still waiting in line for a piece of bread? Yeah. Do you think he wants to be back there? I don't think so. Why don't you come to America? It's a new ball game. 10 or 15 years from now, what do you figure, if you're dreaming, you'll be doing? Anything but <laughs> driver. <laughs> Anything but driving a taxi. Yeah. Driver, let's go. Do you have a special address? No, listen, address? listen, what's the word? Repeat it, specific. Do you have No, no, specific. repeat, specific. specific. OK, specific. again. Specific. Later on 48 Hours. Three minutes and that's it, it's gone. Your van is in the wrong place at the wrong time. And that's just the beginning. It says no damage. No damage, no I do it a few days a week, my husband does it a few days a week, and my sister does it a few days a week. 48 Hours will continue. came back to the car, the car was gone. It said legal parking up till 2 p.m. I was towed before 2 p.m. They took my car. I went to bring her flowers and my car got towed away. What's more to say? The car was gone. <laughs> you know what I mean? All of New York City is a tow-away zone. One big this is, tow zone. This is one big tow zone in New York City, yes. They're quick. Three minutes, man. I, I can't even believe they did it so fast. Because all of New York is a tow-away zone. You guys towed in a tow truck? Anything. Tow truck operators like Emmanuel Jones have plenty of room to work. Oh, well, listen, it's nothing personal. It's about doing what I have to do. That's why I'm not here to tow. There are about 170 tow operators roaming the city streets, working around the clock, six days a week, Monday through Saturday. It's a telephone truck. Sign says no parking anytime. We park here every day for 10 years I've been parking here, and they tow me away. There's a difference between parking and standing, OK? When a telephone truck is working, it's not parked, it's standing. What are we now? What are we doing now? Standing. Okay. Well, no. What are we doing now? Parking. Thank you. <laughs> OK? So this guy, he's going to lose no matter which way he goes, because no one was in the vehicle. The city tows about 400 cars and trucks each day. Most end up here, at the Violation Tow Pound, home for nearly 1,000 vehicles at any given time. This is the easiest part, what we're going to do now. Each car is carefully checked in checked for damages and valuables, and carefully put in its place. I put them together so uh, they won't get lonely. I think they're both Chevrolets. Now the owner just has to come and reclaim his vehicle. Are you with DHL? Did they tow your DHL truck? Oh, yes. Is this your first time here this week? No. Second time here this week. Second time this week? It's only Wednesday. Hi, next. 
Getting your car back is simple. You have to pay the parking tickets, then come back here and pay the towing fee. Since the pound is open 24 hours a day, you just wait in line for your turn. Over there, you have to wait in line. Over here, you have to wait in line. Look, everybody's in. You're on the wrong line. I'm sorry. I've been here since this morning. Since what time? Since about 10 a.m. this morning, right now. That's what, nine hours ago? Right. You must prove you own the car. Identification for what? I had my wallet stolen two weeks ago. Have your registration and proof of insurance handy. Well, excuse me. I need to get my car. I need to get my car back. Well, I don't. I don't have anything else than this. Then fork over one hundred fifty dollars for the towing fee. The whole day's pay wasted down the drain. This is all hardworking money. Hardworking money. Plus, a minimum $35 ticket for the violation that got you towed in the first place. That's living in the city here. The city hauled in 94,000 cars last year at a minimum $185 a pop. That translates into more than $17 million in city revenue. I don't see how the city ain't got no money and they getting all this money here now. Hands sticking out. Give me that money. Come on, give me that money. You feel bad for these people? Yeah, yeah, I do, but there's nothing that I can do about it, you know. I don't need this crap. Do you feel safe back here? Well, that's bulletproof glass. Has anybody tried to come through that glass? No, not yet. I need this like I need small Martians banging right here, banging right here on the head. You like this job? <laughs> <laughs> We are heading over to Park Avenue, 19 and 20th Street. It's 10 p.m., shift change. But they don't call this the graveyard shift at the tow pound. What do they call you guys? We call it um, disco tow operators. Disco tow? Exactly. Because we basically hit uh, the discos. Philip Adam has been part of the disco squad for three years. How long does it take you to take one of these? Three minutes. Three minutes and that's it, it's gone. You don't want any confrontations with the, uh, the uh, patrons out here at all because they're very, they're very much irate, they'll, they'll get very much upset. Hey, listen, where you going with this? We're at 38 and 12th Avenue, sir. There's nothing I can do. There's not, not, not a thing I can do, sir. Give me a ride with you. I don't get the pick no. up. Not allowed, sir. It's against city policy. God forbid this. All right. About the time the disco squad was heading out, a captured van was coming in. Arnold Wilkerson owns the Little Pie Company. That was his parked van that just got hit, then got towed. We parked our van out there for years and no one's ever bothered it, you know. Uh, you know, why all of a sudden tonight? It wasn't what I expected to be doing at 11.30 at night. OK. Meanwhile, the disco tow squad has hit pay dirt. Put on the safety pin. That's the trophy. Rolls Royce, yeah. This is a travesty of justice. Dave, get in, man. Let me just say, for the <laughs> city property right now, yeah, uh, miss, can I get some help here, please? Back at the pound, Arnold Wilkerson is in the process of getting his van back. You seem awfully calm about this whole thing. Well, you know, what are you going to do? You live in New York, you get upset, you go crazy. Uh, does it say anything on that report about the damage that was done to the uh, truck? It says none. None. No, no damage. Still it says no tall. damage? No damage, still to tow. The damage to the Little Pie Company truck was later estimated at $3,000. Our presence probably didn't hurt, but the damage supervisor couldn't have been nicer. OK, that's fair. Okay. Yeah. Are you guys going to do right by him? Sure. The city is nice, but only to a point. It's not nice enough to waive the towing fee. My company has just lost $150. I don't feel good about that. So what are you going to do now? Park the car in the garage. <laughs> Just as Arnold was leaving, the catch of the night was rolling in. You're like the fisherman who caught the biggest fish in the biggest lake. Fish, yeah. <laughs> like to show it off, you know? It's like some kind of competition. You won tonight. Yeah, yeah, it looks that way, right? But in New York, tow truck drivers do not rest on their laurels. No, it's just a palladium. That's a four. So many cars. So many.
taxi driver has his own way of driving, his own system. There are airport workers, people who only work the airports. There are street workers. There are guys who only work at nights. There are guys who only work during the day. I'm a street worker. I'm a, I, they stick their arm up, I pick them up and take them where they want to go. After 22 years driving a taxi, Andre Davis says he knows who he's picking up even before he picks them up. What will happen is you'll get somebody from the south who will stand on the corner and go, taxi, taxi, you know what I mean? Models will give you like their, you know what I mean, the hand all the way out, the leg out, you know what I mean? Like they're modeling a dress for you, you know, they give you that little pirouette, you know what I mean? Then you've got the, the yuppie businessman who is like, you know, punching, you know, I mean like, you know, with the snap. I never pick anybody who snaps at me. I'll run them over first. All right, we got somebody. We got a live one right here. Here he is, the professor. He's in a rush, too. Well, I need to get to Port Authority. Is that okay, we'll, uh, get, we'll get you to Port Authority. As fast as possible. What kind of work do you do? I'm an administrator at Passaic County College. You know, I'm a nosy taxi driver. You get into my taxi, I'm going to ask you questions. We're going to talk. And I very rarely get rebuffed. And the reason for that is New Yorkers like to talk. And they don't know who I am. I don't know who they are. So we can exchange these very deep secrets about each other because we're never going to see each other again. So you're married? Nope. You're a single guy? Yep. I'm trying to stay that way, too. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I actually just broke up with my girlfriend. We've been out for uh, eight years. Who broke up with who? I broke up with her. Was she putting pressure on you to marry? Yeah. When women talk in the back seat, that's the best thing in the world, because women think cab drivers are deaf. So you hear things that uh, no other man has ever heard? No. And like, the, the, and like women, they, when they get together, did you see that tramp with the dress halfway up her backside? I know, with those fat thighs, I'd be too embarrassed to wear a short dress like that. And whoever told the brown shoes went with a black dress? And was that her boyfriend? That was her husband? Ew. We will return with Andre the cab driver for the hottest 15 minutes he's ever spent in his cab. And we're not talking about temperature here. We're, well, you know what we're talking about. But she's a nice girl. I like her anyway. She's my second best friend, Def, to you. Later in our 48 hours. <laughs> Just a normal weekday morning on a normal city street. But this is New York, so you know things won't be normal for long. Sure enough, at 7.55 a.m., New Yorkers pour out of their buildings and drive their cars. Not to work, but to the other side of the street. It's a ritual known as alternate side of the street parking. It's sort of like walking your dog. You do this every day, right? It seems simple enough. Cars on one side of the street must clear out for three hours so the street sweeper can come through. But to comply with this law, New Yorkers have to illegally double park on the other side of the street. Then, three hours later, everyone moves back to where he started. It looks simple enough, but remember that this is a city where nothing is simple. I was parked on the other side. Now, this is good until uh, Thursday, and so I've moved it over to this side. I do it a few days a week. My husband does it a few days a week, and my sister does it a few days a week. But yesterday, I was parked on this side, and I moved it over to the other side. But at 8 o'clock, the meters are not legal, so you would put your But So therefore, what you would do is then. Don't you understand? Oh, my god. Great country you come from. You know. It's crazy in a way, <laughs> but you know, that's that's New York. Some people just sit in their cars all morning. Like Rudy, a building superintendent. I'm gonna most probably wait till eleven o'clock unless I'm lucky. What do you mean wait till eleven? Till I can uh, park it on the other side. How come you don't park in a garage? can afford it. What is it? What do the garages cost around here? Four hundred enough. Wow. For I don't want to buy the place. I just want to park it. You know. <laughs> nothing to nothing to do about it. You're not going to fight the system. It's going to be the same thing always. I it's going to get voice too. Yeah, I'll have a pastrami sandwich on oh. rye with mustard. The guys who run the Meal Mart Deli can't sit in their car all day. Slice of pickle. There's pastrami to slice. 
Who do you get to sit in the car for you? My dishwasher. That's when he eats lunch. The dishwasher. Yeah, I'm gonna blink the car wheel, okay? Good plan. But there's just one hitch. Where is the car parked? Can we bring you something to eat? No, somebody brought me coffee already. They did? Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. It's the $40 ticket lady. In all this human suffering, there must be a way to make a buck. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Glenn Bolofsky found a way. This is a bestseller. Um, this outsells uh, everything we've ever done. It's a greeting card. It's a look-alike New York City parking ticket. You can see there's a funny expression on each card. He publishes an alternate side parking calendar. There's officially 32 days during the course of the year where alternate side rules are suspended, and each one is highlighted in yellow in the calendar. Now, some of these holidays, though, I mean, if I'm not the most religious person in the world, but Ascension Thursday, that's a bit of an obscure holiday, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty obscure. And then down here we have on the May 20th. That's the uh, second day of Shavuot. And it's... I didn't know about that one either. Yeah, well, <laughs> what about the first day of Shavuot? When a person has a spot, they really, in effect, own that spot. Amazing but true, Val Faria sells something he doesn't even own, strips of the public street, parking spots. People can't really fathom the idea of how this, how this thing works. Val's a neighborhood broker of sorts, matching up people who need a parking space with those who are about to vacate one. And the person who needs a spot is being charged $9, and that spot usually could be good as sometimes as much as two or three days, so you're really only paying $9. And a person going out, we would credit them their account $4. Do people ever say to you, where did you get the right to sell the, the streets of New York? Yes, I've had that happen to me <laughs> once. And in fact, a woman called me and threatened to call the police on me one time. Massive, systematic, illegal double parking is usually tolerated. Triple parking, however, is discouraged. This guy just left his car in the middle of the street. Oh, but they left a note. Dick, back in a few minutes. The whole purpose of all this alternate side business is to sweep the streets. Once that happens, there is some more waiting. Then a little waiting, followed by some more waiting, until, until it's time for musical cars to begin again. And in the middle of all this, the triple parker returns. I thought the sign said you can park on this side today. His neighbors helpfully point out the magnitude of his error. It's unbelievable. It's, it's insane. You can say that all over again. Right now is uh, five minutes to 11. I guess you can quit too now, right? A lot of people in New York say they'd love to just get rid of their cars. Okay, have a nice day. But who in New York would take them? Come on. There's theater on these streets. People go to Broadway, they're paying $100 a seat to see Miss Saigon. This got to just drive around on these streets. You see the greatest theater in the world. And Andre, driving a cab in New York City, has seen pretty much everything, but mostly, he enjoys seeing red. You know what I really like picking up? Ladies in red dresses. Why ladies in red dresses? I'll tell you the true story. I was driving 43rd and 3rd. You know the office, they, they've been together all week, right? Friday night, you know what I mean? It's it just payday, they went out. You know, he still got the attache case, she's got the shopping bag, right? They go in, they had dinner, you know, they had a few drinks. They get into the cab. The guy said 35th and second and jumped right on top of him, right? I mean, you know, no old bar, the grunts, the groan. I get the 35th and second, and they're still going out. So what am I going to be, coitus interrupters? I pull over, you know, put the car in park, and I watch like this. <laughs> For 15 minutes, I'm watching like this, you know what I mean? And the guy, finally the guy, like, uh, he, he, they reach, you know, Mount Everest. <laughs> He looks at me, I look at him, and the three of us start laughing, right? So the guy he says, how was it? I said, well, pretty good. I like the way you, you know, with the ear. I never tried that before. And now, the woman? She was, the, you know, she was delirious. She had a red dress on.
We didn't want to be unfair tonight, so we showed you a normal rush hour. But just four days after our 48 hours, there was a morning commute that was unusual even by New York City standards. A rainy day, a rock slide, an overturned gasoline truck, a related series of explosions, a closed suspension bridge, created the worst traffic jam in memory. Remember our intrepid commuter, Pat? She got so frustrated, she pulled off the road and contemplated changing jobs to one where she could walk to work. I'm Dan Rather. That's 48 hours for this week. Coming up, your late local news. But first, here's a look ahead to our next report. They say they had just one choice. It was either me or him. Murder. And I fired the gun. Now, battered women are asking for mercy. It was scary. If she's in danger. She's got a black eye there. And she has the right to defend herself. But when does the right to kill... If she's there going, click, click, click. ...become a license to kill? I took a step and she shot me in the back. Till death do us part. Next week. If you're looking for mystery and suspense, always start at the scene of the crime. It's crime time after prime time later tonight. Thanks for watching CBS. Now get ready for your local news. For a transcript of 48 hours, send $4 to Journal Graphics, 267 Broadway, New York, New York, 13007. And to purchase a VHS cassette of today's broadcast, call 1-800-338-4847.